This is the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday we do lessons and carols. It's the Sunday of Mary's song, the Magnificat. Here from Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 46, the song of Mary. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For the Lord has looked upon me with favor on the lowly state of the Lord's servant. Surely from now on all generations shall see this servant as blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is the Lord's name. Indeed, the Lord's mercy is for those who fear the Lord. From generation to generation. For the Lord has shown strength with God's arm. The Lord has scattered the proud in their imaginations of their hearts. The Lord has brought down the powerful from their thrones. And the Lord has lifted up the lowly. The Lord has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich the Lord has sent away empty. The Lord has come to the aid of God's children, the children of Israel, in remembrance of the Lord's mercy, accordance to the promise the Lord has made to our ancestors, to Abraham, to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may remember two weeks ago, we sat here with James and asked him about this crash and asked him what it looked like. And James was wise to say, it looks like a barn, and indeed it is. It's a stable. And James noted that it was empty. And we stated going into the season of Advent, we needed to empty ourselves. Empty ourselves of all the things that just get us so harried and hurried and flustered and fettered so that we can make room for the arrival of Jesus to fill us with the true meaning of the season. And so this Sunday with James and the children, we're going to fill up the crash, the barn, the stable. And we begin with the manger, the feeding trough, the feeding trough for the animals. Jesus wasn't born in a palace or a comfortable home. He was born out in the elements, in the dark of night, a cold place among the animals, among their feeding place. And the only place he could be laid to get a nap was the very place that the cattle and the sheep would feed. And so also in the stable, we find Mary exhausted from the work of giving birth. Our preschool director, Brooke, is eight weeks and eight months and some weeks pregnant, due sometime between Christmas and New Year's. To see her is to see the joy of, of Mary, excited to bring a life into this world. And as I was talking with her this week, she's too kind of whirlwinded by how fast she's gotten to this point. She's ready and not ready. It's been one of those wonderful pregnancies and I can imagine Mary joyous from the whirlwind of going from, how could this happen to me? I have never been with a man. 
how is Joseph going to take this news to Joseph being given a dream that tells him he too can be at this place. He too can celebrate the birth of his son who is the son of God. What must it have been for Joseph to raise this son to be a carpenter just like him? For this son to know Joseph as his earthly father and to know no difference between Joseph's love for Jesus and his love for James. A son who was Joseph's son in every way. It's amazing the role that Joseph plays in the story. Protector. He will take Mary and Jesus from Bethlehem to Egypt to protect them from a crazy king. He will take them from Egypt to Nazareth. And Jesus will be called the son of a carpenter because Joseph found his place in the story, a place of joy too. And though we don't know there was a donkey in the story, it's not in the gospel. Tradition being what it is, we place the donkey in the, in the manger, a beast of burden. Maybe Mary did ride a donkey as a sign that one day her son would ride a colt, the foal of a donkey. Into the city of Jerusalem is a sign that he would be the prince of peace, not a warrior king. And there were in the fields shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. They're not yet to the manger, to the stable. That's a, another week away. And the shepherds, they're, they're years away. They don't come the night of Jesus' birth. That's not the biblical story. In fact, the shepherds play, I mean, the wise men, the magi play an important part in protecting Jesus from the crazy king who would slaughter the innocent children in order to eliminate Jesus. So where's the joy in this story? The joy for Mary is that God has chosen the least likely, the poor, the ones the rich would not select to bring the richest news to the world that the Messiah, the Savior, the King of Kings, the Son of God has taken on flesh, become God with us, and a handmaiden. And a young man who had no clue he would have a part in the story. This young couple comes to Bethlehem, the city of David, because Joseph was of the house and lineage of David. Because an oppressive government would tax them and call a census in this way. And somehow, in spite of the oppressive nature of this government, God works out the story of mercy and grace and salvation. And so the story in the lessons and carols this Sunday is whatever burden, whatever worry, Whatever fear, whatever obstacle 
has plagued you in 2023. The story of Christmas comes to you. You say in those dark, cold, isolated places, Emmanuel, God with us comes to proclaim good news for all people. For unto us is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord who doesn't come with swords and tanks and weapons, who comes in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is what we'll sing. That is what we'll tell. That is what we'll know this Sunday. May that peace be with you. And may this Advent bring you the best Christmas ever. Amen.